Hey y'all, welcome back to the studio. I'm Lane Zolke of Southern Custom Engraving and you're watching Master Engraver TV. And in today's episode, we are going to follow up where we left off on quick tip number four, where I showed you how to transfer with wax a design from a master plate over to your own practice plate. Today I'm going to show you how I cut the original master plate that made this set of castings. So if you did purchase this set of castings from me, you'll be able to use this video to follow along and see how the original was cut. Along the way, I'll show you two different types of background treatment, both a deep relief background and a lined background, which is a little bit quicker to cut. So join me under the microscope and I'll show you how it was done. As I chuck my plate up into the vise here, notice that I place it diagonally, and that allows it to sit directly on top of the vise jaws and avoid any trampoline effect or vibration. These plates are available at grstools.com and they come in a pack of five. As I cut this next section here, I'll increase playback speed to about two times normal speed. Cutting a plate like this takes many hours, and I just can't fit everything into one video, so I'll edit it down to the most important parts. The graver I'm using here is a GRS C-Max 120 degree carbide graver. It's a really versatile tool, a bit harder to learn to use initially, but it's worth the effort and time put in. Its wide profile allows you to create really fine tapered shading and nice flares and bevels which are important for creating lifelike engraving. One quick tip here I'd like to show is that the inside line of your leaves should basically follow the same general path as the outline of your backbone. In this view you can see how my right hand, my graver hand, really doesn't move that much. All of the turning is done with my left hand. The right hand pretty much stays still as the left hand turns the work into the graver. One of the ways to ensure a smooth flowing backbone is to coordinate the left hand that rotates the vise with your right hand that's controlling the cutting. Always be sure and stop your cutting when you reposition your left hand and then start again once you reposition. Don't ever try to rotate too far in any one stretch. Another tip for smooth backbones is to always double check your reference lines. Here I found something that I didn't quite like, and so I'm going back over the design with a scribe. I'll then use this new line to follow with the graver.
as I mentioned before, sometimes your transfer lines don't come out quite how you want. Maybe your drawing wasn't quite correct or the transfer smudged a little bit. Now's the time you can go back with the scribe and clean those lines up and get them accurate so that you've got a good reference line to cut against. So now that you've seen me cut an outline, I'll show you how I get to this background. This is a standard stipple background that I would use if I'm going to ink in an engraving. The basic tools I'm going to use are a flat graver, uh, a 105 degree graver, and also a scorper, which is basically a V graver with the tip flattened off just a bit. Here you can see the flat graver takes a really wide swath of material as you move along. But its downfall is that it can't get into really tight corners without running into the walls of your engraving. Notice here how I carefully sneak up to the scroll line just until the chip flies. Here you can see that little scorper graver that I mentioned. Basically it's just a V graver with the tip whacked off flat and it cuts a little bit wider swath of material than a normal V graver would when you're cutting away the background. Its main bonus is that it allows you to get into really tight corners where a flat graver wouldn't reach into. Take note that when I start cutting away a section of background, I always start from an intersection of lines deep inside of a corner. This helps me to avoid running into the wall of a scroll with the heel of the graver and scarring it. The next tool I'm going to show you is the GRS850 air turbine handpiece. And it's wonderful in that it uses really tiny down to 0.25 millimeter round ball burrs. And I use these to further flatten out the background after I've trimmed it with the graver. The handpiece will run off the air from any GRS unit. I use it on my Graver Max G8. It spins at about 330,000 RPM and doesn't have a lot of torque, but it nearly vaporizes metal. Its only downfall is that it needs a really practiced hand to keep it under control. You can wipe out quite a bit of work with one errant swipe. The 
next step that I take after lowering the background with the air tool is to come in with a little small flat tipped punch that I keep in the GRS Graver handpiece. I make these from old burrs. I basically flatten off the tip and then bounce it a few times over a diamond sharpening stone. And this creates a bit of micro texture on the tip of the tool that transfers over to the, the piece that I'm engraving. The final step in this background treatment will be to go over everything with a fine pointed stipple tool also held in the GRS handpiece. I really don't purchase any special tools when I make these. Uh, I just use old carbide ball burrs that I break off the tip and then sharpen to a needle point. Any piece of carbide or high-speed tool steel stock will work. Notice how the background turns a shade darker as I go over it. You'll want to make sure that there's no shiny or uneven spots when you finish it. Next we'll start shading the design and this is a good time to tell you a little bit about what makes for good shading. One of the first things you'll notice is that I create a fine, fine taper in the shade lines. I start from almost nothing, just a hairline, and gradually widen out till it reaches the end of the cut. Each of those cuts runs parallel and merges at the very tail end of the cut. And this is where the shade is the darkest on the leaf. One of the problems I most often see from beginners is that they don't treat shading for what it is, and that is creating light and dark areas on the leaves. They'll often just use random shade lines in order to cover up white space on the leaves, with no real thought put into their placement. You need to remember that just as if we were drawing leaves with a pencil, we're creating shadow and shade and dimension with our shade lines. We're just doing it with the graver instead of with pencil lines. I tell beginners that you should know why you're placing each shade line where you are. If you don't know why you're putting it there, then it may not belong. One other thing to keep in mind when you're shading is balance. Just like we're trying to keep a nice balance between positive and negative area when we create our scroll design, you'll want to create a nice balance between high and low, dark and light when you shade your leaves. Too much white space or too much dark space on any one leaf or area will generally stick out like a sore thumb. Another little tip that you can see put into practice as I shade this leaf is to keep a small section of white next to any area of background that you're cutting next to. This will help the leaf stand out against that black background and not blend into it.
here's that finished design. It's nice and evenly balanced with a nice flat even background. Now the next background we'll do is a line background. I make a wax transfer from a master plate that I've created. It has two different line background spacings on it and I can choose which one I want and easily make a wax transfer onto the object that I'm engraving. When using this method you just need to be careful that you don't wipe away your wax as you're cutting the background. If you do you can always go back over it with a fresh transfer. The goal here is consistent, even spacing. You'll also want to take care when starting and stopping not to run into the walls of the scroll design and gouge any of the leaves. I generally do this background before I put my shading in. That way if I do make a mistake and gouge a leaf I can come back and trim it up afterwards. I generally use the same 120 degree graver that I've used to cut everything else to do the background. One pro tip here is to go in and back cut all of your background lines. That means to spin the design over and start from the end point and cut back towards the starting point. That'll help keep taper out of the background lines and they'll be nice and even. One thing you should always have in the back of your mind when shading a leaf is what the final leaf shape should look like. You should be thinking in three dimensions rather than just shading a flat surface. We're creating a three dimensional leaf with our shading. As we wrap up the plate here, I'll leave you with one last little tip, and that's about the cross hatching. Cross hatching should kind of disappear into the background, and so I generally cut it about one third the depth of the rest of the shade lines, and it needs to be very, very evenly spaced. When viewed from a distance, it shouldn't really be evident to the naked eye. Another thing to consider is that cross-hatching isn't always necessary. It does add 
some shade and texture to the piece. But with some shading styles, you really don't need it. And here's our finished piece with the line background. A background like this can take about one third the time that a normal stippled background would take, so it's very efficient. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully you learned something along the way. If you're interested in purchasing a set of these master practice plate castings, you can find them at southerncustomengraving.com. Be sure and keep an eye on my website store because I'll be releasing a line background master plate fairly soon that will allow you to transfer a set of clean and accurate lines onto your own engraving to create a line background. Also be sure and take a look at the description below this video where you can find links to all of the tools that I use in my engraving. Till next time, be sure to like and subscribe, keep your pencils in your graver sharp, and most of all, have fun at the bench. Thanks for watching.